Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager at Whole Latte Love, and today I'm going to take you through the hydraulics of a Profitec Pro 300. You know, follow the water, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Lovely little stroll down the river. <laughs> yes, I'm corny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so as uh, most people know, everything starts at the reservoir. Mm -hmm. So this one I've already taken the socket off here, so you know, no mystery what goes on here. We put water in it. Water, yes. Good water. Good water. So this is the socket that goes inside there. It just unscrews and inside there, there's a spring behind a little bearing. So if you ever have an issue where there's no water coming through your machine, you don't see mm -hmm. anything coming out of the reservoir, a uh, quick and easy thing to check is this pin right here in the middle of the socket, because mm -hmm. uh, that's what pushes that bearing in. So. Okay. Just a quick thing to check. If you don't push you don't the bearing, no water is going to come through. Exactly. Okay. All right. Now, I've already taken a couple things apart here just to make for your viewing pleasure. So, let me throw that part on the floor real quick <laughs> and move the reservoir insert out of the way. Normally, there's two screws that come through the bottom holding that on and two plugs going to the sensor. So, this is the underside of the socket where our little friend here plugs in. Mm -hmm. So you see we got two tubes here, you got this tube, the lower tube, this is on all PropTech ECM uh, designs, the bottom tube is your inlet and mm -hmm. the upper tube is your return, which on this one is only coming off of your OPV. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to follow in the system, we have a little inline filter here, just in case you drop a little something inside that reservoir, you don't want it getting into the inner workings. This guy saves your day. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very hard to see. I don't know if you can or not, but there's like a fine. almost translucent fine mesh screen in there that can collect any particles that you have in there. So if you're ever having a flow issue, another good place to check right there. Make sure you don't see any buildup. Uh, sometimes salinity can salinity buildup can restrict flow, but it's very hard to see. So mm -hmm. if you just give it a quick uh, Give blow old, it out. Give the old blow test. Yeah, see, yeah. see if you can get anything out of there. Okay. If, if it doesn't blow through easily, then, you know, these aren't really serviceable, so you'll probably just want to replace, replace it. it. But. Okay. So that's our next step there. And our vibratory pump, okay? Comes in through this little elbow right here, in through the pump. Uh, if your pump's ever not working, it's possible. You got this little limit right here. Could have popped. So that's something to check. You can so just replace those. If the motor those. Gets, or the pump gets really hot, it would. Yeah, if you if you were trying to run this thing for a super long time, the, the machine should time it out. But mm -hmm. if you were to do it to a timeout, turn it on, do it over again, something like that. I don't know why you'd do that. Right. I'm not asking questions, but if you ever <laughs> do it and your pump stops working, hopefully yeah. it's just that okay. quick and easy thing to fix or replace. Sorry, you can't mm -hmm. fix that. Uh, so off of the pump, we're going to come to this elbow, join to this braided line right here comes up to another elbow that finds us in our valve tree. Mm -hmm. uh, this valve tree is in a lot of their machines. So it's basically the same thing you're going to see on uh, the bigger boys, the uh, Synchronica 700, things like that. So uh, what you're going to do is come up here. There's first a solenoid here. This is the fill valve solenoid. So this is the solenoid that will open up when your steam or service boiler is trying to fill up. Okay. Okay. So right past that solenoid is a non-return valve, meaning the water can go oh, dish away, but not dish away. Mm -hmm. So if it's going dish away, then that guy's broken. Okay. Okay, so once you pass there, comes down, and just like any other boiler, uh, it's gonna come and fill up until your level probe, which is this guy right here. This one's a little loose, so we can pull it up and kind of show you. I'm not gonna go all the way, but this guy yeah. goes down, it's probably about that long down into your boiler. So the water is around there mm -hmm. and the rest is your steam for your steam pressure. Okay. So that fills up, heats up. You got steam. Steam comes out through this T and has a few directions to go. Go with the quick and easy guy right here, over here to this valve body. This is your steam valve. It comes in here, turn your knob in the front comes down and out the tube. Voila, steam. We'll have more on that in another video. Mm -hmm. uh, back this way, come over here. We have a few different options of direction. So you've got 
This fitting on the bottom of the T right here goes to a capillary tube that is mm -hmm. going to come down here to your pressure gauge. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind that on the Pro 300, you only have steam pressure. It does not show you your uh, brew pressure. Okay. So that's the only pressure gauge we have here. Uh, off that T, we have this contraption right here. Uh, Bunch of different things going on here. You have a pressure stat that uh, tells basically your steam boiler to stop steaming or to start steaming, mm -hmm. or heating, sorry. Uh, in either direction here, you have two sizes. You can probably see on there the uh, smaller end right here. This is your vacuum breaker. Uh, if you ever have, uh, you know, when your machine first starts heating up, you expect to see a little bit of steam or something coming out from the uh, well, front button there. Mm -hmm. uh, tray. Yeah. Yep. If that ever doesn't stop, then that would be this guy is probably not sealing properly and you need to service that. We will also have a video on that. Uh, on the other side here, this is where this machine is crazy. <laughs> crazy. So you have, okay. crazy. well, extra safe. Extra safe. So yeah. you have a safety valve right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is rated to 2.3 bars. Okay. The Safety valve on the top of the steam boiler is rated 2.5 bars. So okay. if your machine ever starts overheating, it should first vent from here, and that's going to come out of the front of the machine. That's where all those tubes lead yep. to. Is that all to of front? these tubes come down to the front there. The only tube coming back to the reservoir is from your OPV. Right. So okay. it gives you a little bit better of an yeah. angle there. So it comes off of your solenoid from the brew boiler, which I'll get to in a moment. Mm hmm here and then down to that where goes you got your the... little discharge spout in the front yep. there okay okay all right uh so yeah so you got coming off there or if it keeps overheating and this isn't enough to release the pressure uh you have your secondary safety valve right here that'll blow at 2.5 okay okay um i think that covers oh, oh one more thing one more hot water thing. tap hot water tap yep uh, hot water taps up here comes off of an elbow on the bottom of the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if you're ever having an issue and you you open your tap and you have no flow from here, uh, you service your tap and still you don't get any flow. Chances are you got some scale buildup down either the elbow or the bottom of the boiler there. Okay. So. All right. Now we'll get over to the brewing espresso side. Yeah. All right. So. Again, back off of uh, our main junction here on the valve tree, you have another one-way valve going up that way mm -hmm. to your OPV. OPV adjusted from the top. We have a video showing you how to do that. Uh, you got back to the T here. This is the supply line that goes to your brew boiler. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how does this brew boiler work? Uh, I'm glad you asked, hey. Mark. <laughs> Did I? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah I, I, I can read your thoughts. Oh, okay. I'm in your head by now. Yeah, yeah. We work together enough. Yeah. So, I've got old Scaly over here mm -hmm. to be a little demo. Yeah. This guy was going to get some work done on him anyway, so I thought I'd bring him in for a cameo appearance. Wow. All right. So, inside the machine, this is how she sits. Okay. Yep. You got that water coming in through here. Mm -hmm. This is the mounting bracket where everything hangs right there. And over here I've got our solenoid. So that's what it looks like ripped out and half the stuff taken off of it. Mm -hmm. So you got your solenoid valve uh, electronically controlled. A little mm -hmm. copper coil that goes around it when it's activated. There's a piston in there that gets pulled forward and the water can flow from here to here. Mm -hmm. I'll show you why that's important. So, there is your heating element for the brew boiler. That little hole up there is where the water's coming down. And it fills up in here. So, there's your tube that is going to supply the water down to the group head. This does not go straight down and out through here. Or here. Mm -hmm. It takes, goes down. It takes a little detour first. It does, it? yes. <laughs> All right. So, it's going to go down the tube and it comes through some channels in here and it's going to come out through this hole right here. Uh -huh. Again, we got our little friend the solenoid. 
it's out through here, and then out this side, back into here, at which point it goes out through there, hits your dispersion plate, out through the shower, and extracting some delicious coffee. Mm -hmm. So, if you were to ever have an issue with flow, one of the most common places to have flow issues on an electrovalve group head is the solenoid. Um, you can either have some scale buildup in here, or on this side, or both sides, or the piston inside here is just really gunked up. Um, we'll have a little bit more on servicing this in another mm -hmm. video, uh, but regular back flushing should help prevent any, any build up inside here. Yep. So, keep, so keep do it, back keep, flush. Do yes. back flush, yes. Uh, it's more, you'll have a lot more coffee residue building up in here than you will uh, scale buildup. Mm -hmm. The uh, scale is, you'll still get it, but because it's an area of constant flow, mm -hmm. pretty much, you don't see as much time for buildup. Okay. So, but, yeah. And right. I think that about covers all the route of water through your machine. Yeah. Quite interesting. I like that stuff. Yeah. Love seeing it. And thanks for bringing the other boiler along so we get a really good look. Oh, yeah. No problem. All right, Brian. Thanks for taking us through that. Anytime.